so it's a bit of a lag. <laughs> Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the AFLW show for this week. The time has come. It is round one. It is upon us. It has taken this long to finally get here. Um, tonight, I am joined by Terry again. Once again, thank you very much, Tez, for joining. How are you? Up and about, mate. What do you mean? It's round one. Don't give me these rubbish. Get up and about. Come on. <laughs> Well, we've been waiting for this day for a very long time. And we're going to Park, Shan. What do you mean? We're back home. <laughs> Look, it's the first live football we've seen in, what, months. So I'm going to enjoy every single minute of it on Sunday and I hope we actually take home the chocolates because this mob, which we'll get into a little bit later, are the arch, arch enemy that we've hated for so long. And the banter starts now. Well, it should have started on Monday, but it starts now. Yeah, the banter starts the banter now. Starts. Yeah, I mean, look, it's been a long off season, and this is really what one of the many reasons why I love the AFLW because we get to go watch the footy, we get to go watch the club in action, um, and we get to see each other again as well. So, exactly yeah, bring it on! I'm, I'm ready to get run my mouth again. I can't <laughs> wait to run my mouth again. All right. Well, on that note, let's uh, let's kick things off. Desio, with all the experience in the world, she kicks. There it is, just on half time. Ready for Sparkus. gets me every time. I say it every mm -hmm. week. Mm -hmm. Before we kick off, I do want yeah. to remind everybody that um, I know I mentioned tips later, but we do have a cheer squad AFLW tipping. Um, if you want to head to the Carlton cheer squad page, um, the link to join is there. It's $25 to join. Um, still plenty of places left for people to join. Tipping will close um, before the first bounce on Friday night, I believe. So um, you can tip... Um, for any team uh, across like normal men's tipping. But yeah, we'd like to see as many baggers on the female cheer squad tipping as possible. So. Donate your money to me because I'm winning it all. Ooh. Gauntlet has been thrown. I know Pommy last week was said he would, he'd take it out, but okay. Gauntlet has been thrown. I see where this Pommy, is going. Pommy, I see Pommy talking about it. I see Nick running his mouth about it like he's going to take home the chocolates. But I'll tell you right now, I will be winning that competition. You got me. You got me to compete with as well, and I'm pretty savvy on the tips. So all right. on. <laughs> all right. I'm looking forward to seeing how it all um, how it all unfolds. Like, as in, we'll we'll obviously be tracking it week to week um, during the show, so we can yeah. get a live leaderboard every week. That's exciting. Yes, and it's going to be very very funny just to see where people tip and what people tip. So first first things first. We're going to backtrack a little bit and we'll finish off our previews um, leading into round one. Yep. Uh, first off is Paige Trudgen. Um, she is a young player, which is really good to see, um, a midfield slash forward. Um, played, uh, played for Montmorency as her junior club um, and was part of our VFL club by the looks of it. Um, played basketball as well. So... We've, we've seen in previous years that basketball is usually uh, really good when it comes to football. But um, what are your thoughts on Paige? I don't know much about her. I did some research earlier today when, um, when, we, when we locked in the show. I saw the basketball background. You know how I feel about basketballers. Um, uh, I, I know I, I come from the, the sport and I came to footy very late um, because of it. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, honestly, I don't know much about her. But... Um, Everything sounds good so far. Is she in a bracket of youngsters who we don't know what impact they're going to have just yet? I, I feel yeah. like that's where she finds herself. She's in. I feel like we've got a solid group of them. They're young. We're not really sure yet um, where what they're going to do for the club, how they're going to play out, but I guess the opportunities are there. Yeah, well, she's a 2021 replacement player signing. So I'm guessing okay. that we were able to pick her up um, and sign her um, – for the loss of, of a player. So I think her and Poppy, Poppy Shap, who we'll talk about a bit later as well, is in that kind of replacement player category. Mm -hmm. um, she's 100 and, 180 centimetres tall, so she's not short, which is good. Um, and most basketballers are not short. But, yeah, no, she played uh, VFLW for the Blues last year. Um, but she was in the side week in, week out. So 
that that's obviously something that is good for her to have that continuity in her game. Um, and yep. hopefully that um, they do give her a crack this year because we, we're starved of forwards, which we've discussed quite quite often um, in these previews. So it'll be good to get a, a forward that can give the mids a chop out if needed. So is she a chance for round one or is she just behind um, the group of that will play? I, I think we've got a pretty solid 22 um, or if it is 22, I'm not even sure how many. I think it's yeah, eight or 18 now. I think it's 18. So yeah, um, she'd be she'd be pushing, but it'll all depend on um, obviously what what's happening with the um, COVID situation. We're not sure um, who's available at this point because I know the club's pretty tight lipped, um, and I know they do a lot of a lot of testing as well. So it'll be it'll be interesting to see where it all falls when the team is eventually announced. I'm pretty sure that teams will come out tomorrow, pretty standard mm-hmm. Thursday night team selection. Um, so we'll be able to um, dissect that and have a good look at that when that happens. But I, I, I think she's just a slight chance to not not be in the starting lineup for this weekend if yep. everyone's fit and healthy. Okay. Well, listen, we wish her the best of luck for a big year. Yes, and a, and a big career because, you know, she's still a youngster. Still a youngster, um, absolutely. Another player that I haven't really heard too much of, and I think we have a fair few of these this year, is Imogen Milford. Um, she's another player that um, I think we recruited in the off-season. So I'm not too sure too much about her. Um, let's have a quick squeeze at her player profile. Yeah, well, so she's she, not, she seems to not be so different... Um... Excuse me, to to Paige in in the sense that a prospect forward, young, could be something, may, may not be, not sure, but the opportunity's there. You know, with with these these selections, like what like for you in your experience, what like how long do draftees generally have in a window to lock in a you know that next contract? I feel like it'd be a little bit more harder than what it would be in the men's program. Yeah, so I think the cycle for girls is pretty much your your, your two years. Mm. Um, if you're not if you're not making the side every week, it's kind of a small. It is a smaller window because I know most of the rookie contracts are two three years for for the boys. The girls are usually obviously because um, it's not highly um, as professional as as the men's, and they're it's not their full time job. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah, it's kind of not the same. For the girls, it's quite yeah, a smaller window of opportunity, I'd say, like you said. So yep. um, for her being quite quite young, she was drafted from Casey Demon, so another VFLW signing, which has happened quite a lot, which is actually a really good thing for the competition because you see girls that wouldn't usually get a look in at a um, like a local level mm-hmm. would try out for a VFL team, shine, and get noticed. So it's kind of like that extra pathway for, for young girls if they don't get picked up in the Cannons or um, any of the NAB, NAB League teams. Yeah. So um, I think, well, she she looks like she's a, a forward. She kicked 19 goals from 15 games. Very good. Um, Happy she, with that. Yeah. And uh, she's um, a best on ground performance against grand finalists Collingwood in the VFLW. So she's already been playing well against the Pies. So she's automatically in for me. She could be a <laughs> sneaky one. Well, you and I spoke the last time I came onto the show, which was a few weeks ago now. And we spoke about the forward line. It's a little different. It's a little, I guess, non-traditional in, in a sense, you know, traditional footy, you have a tall key target. Whereas yeah. we, we sort of went away from that when we, when we lost Taylor Harris because it worked for us. So um, I guess, you know, you always want to have a prospect forward or a, a focal point up there. That's just kind of, you know, it goes, it goes uh, in parallel with the, you know, the grain of the game. Um, so I guess we'll see how she goes. Yeah, that's exactly right. And I'm looking forward to um, to seeing where her career takes her. So yeah. it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Um, our next player on our list this evening um, is young Brooke Vernon. Now, I think this year is an opportunity for Brooke to really um, assert herself on this on this list. She's been on the list now 
for a couple of years. I think she was drafted back in 2019. So um, I think that, yes, yeah, now's the time for her to really um, put her stamp on her, her game, especially in that back six. So I'm looking forward to seeing what Brooke can do this year. I have a soft spot for Brooke because uh, she was the first AFLW player that I interviewed. And this was an in-person interview. I'm actually going to put the link in the comments right now for you guys to watch it after. She's a gem as a human being. Like she's a gem, uh, really mature uh, for for her age. And I, I'm with you, Shan. I think this is the year that she makes the statement in in, in the sense of putting her name right in that um, – in that best side and yeah. finding and locking in a spot. I think she's, you know, had a few years in the system, as you said, a um, couple of pre-seasons, knows her way around the place. I think she'd be very familiar. I think once you've had two to three seasons here in the system, in the, you know, in the women's team, I think you're, you almost become, you almost become like a senior player almost because the competition exactly right. is just so young, you know, it's in its sixth season. She's been around for, you know, three or two or three seasons now. So, yeah, I'm excited for her. I think she's really going to start showing what she has to offer. 100%. And, yeah, she's definitely one of those players that um, are a strong um, strong player on our list and I, I want to see her, her see her shine because um, yeah. obviously with the departure of our other skipper um, in, in Katie Loins, that, that – kind of breakout defender is something that we're looking for. I don't know, um, Brooke Walker is another one of those that can play that role. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So Brooke, Brooke Vernon, I should say, there's a couple of them. Um, <laughs> where where would she lock down her spot? In in the back pocket, halfback? Yeah, see, that's – I want to see her play a bit more up the ground. Okay. So – she she can play on tall and small, and it, I think it will depend on our opponent. Um, gotcha. And, and and who who they want her lining up against, and like from the games that she she's played, she's played against both the Bulldogs and Collingwood. So we kind of know that the Bulldogs are, are, are strong in that midfield. Um, and heading into the forward line, they're probably a little bit smaller than than other clubs, whereas Collingwood have got your Chloe Malloys and and, and that sort of thing. So it will be a, a dependent on the opponent, I think, for me. Absolutely. Hmm. So the next girl on our list has been one of our integral players for a very, very long time, and I think she is still the captain of the VFLW side, mm -hmm. um, and that is Natalie Plain. I love her. I love the way she goes about her football. She is like... Uh, the defence bull, if that makes sense. I just love the way she throws herself at the ball, at the player. Her tackling pressure is in incredible. I just I just love everything about it. Yeah, uh, um, I echo what you said, what you say. Um, my first impression of her when I watched her play was, yeah, that tenacity and that, that toughness and that grit. Um, mm -hmm. I felt like I saw another side to her uh, 2021 just with the work yeah. she was doing um, with the Indigenous community and, and you know, obviously bringing awareness to, to her heritage and, and and whatnot. And I kind of like when that happens, especially with the AFLW players, because they're so new to, well, to me, and I guess to, yeah. to most of us, that when you start unraveling layers of who they are, you, you, you've, I feel like you form a, a better connection with them. So, yeah, I feel like I've got a lot more of a understanding of, you know, who she is, even though there's probably more to understand. Um, but, yeah, I find her and Gab Pound to be two of our more underrated players, but two of our more important players. 100%. And, like, just looking at her stats from last year, she averaged 10 disposals a game. Mm. So in AFLW terms, that's that's a fair amount of disposals if you're not an elite midfielder like your Maddie Prisparkis or or of the like. So even her metres gained was roughly 1,646. So it's what? That's quite a, quite a total there. And, like, her contested possessions, uh, 27. Yeah. That's pretty good for someone who plays in, in the back half of the ground. Like, that just yeah. shows her aggression towards the football. And just I just love the way she plays her football. I, yeah. I, I sit there and I watch her um, at the VFL level when they stream it, when they stream it. I don't really stream it much. No. Um, 
and you you just hear her name constantly being called, and, and I just yeah, I, I I can't see a side without her in it, and yep. you kind of tell when she's not playing. Yes, a, yeah. That gap. I feel like we'll feel that more this year than what we did last year. I mean, we spoke about we've lost a couple of senior players. Um, so all of a sudden, players like, you know, Nat Plain, um, Gab Pound, mm-hmm. like I said, those who who might be a little underrated on the outside. But I think the most important part of what um, Nat Plain will bring this season is the leadership aspect. Oh, yeah. And I think this is the time now that all of the girls that are in that in that bracket that have been around for a long time need to step up. And need right. to show that leadership, and we've said this. We've said this before, you and I. We've we've had that discussion, and I feel yeah. like this week is the week to really prove to the AFLW world that we're here to mean business. No more of this expectation, and and nothing happens. Where we don't want to, you know, promise so much and then deliver nothing. So it starts on Sunday afternoon. Yep, I'm with you. Two to go, I promise. <laughs> um, next girl is, I think I mentioned it earlier, is Poppy Poppy Shap. Yes. So she's another one of our sign-on players. Um, I I haven't seen too much about her. I saw a little bit of a profile on her. Um, they did a video with her with her dad. Um, I think when they introduced all the new players, the, the Carlton web page did a little bit of a um, like a little thing of all the players um yep. she's she looks quite young um, i think everyone was um noticing her more for her mullet um to be perfectly honest um but you know, a vibe. it is a vibe isn't it i think that's kind of the going trend at the moment i think the mullet's back oh i wouldn't look yes i think you're right in the sense that it's back i wouldn't personally throw a mullet on this uh on this head but no. um no <laughs> But no, I must say that the hair is growing back beautifully. Yes, thank you, thank <laughs> you. I actually have an interesting story with Poppy Shap. Now, love awesome. Poppy. It's interesting because we've we've been able to see a bit of her personality at this early stage in her career. So you know, as as I do with all draftees, you know, men or women, I, I follow them on Instagram, and some of them are private, um, but they all accept the follow. Now, Poppy has left me on scene. <gasps> And no. not let me follow her. So, Pop, listen, I just want to be friends, first of all. And uh, I would appreciate it if I could just follow you so I can support, get around you, oh, and, no. uh, you know, and, and and give you that that love and support that, um, you know, that I'm willing to give. So just to call out there, if anybody knows Poppy, wants to uh, send oh, a message no. to her, I tried. I wanted to follow her, get around her. But, You've been ghosted. Um, yeah, I have. I've been ghosted. Look, it happens to the best of us, all right? <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh, that's actually the funniest. That's the highlight of my that's the highlight of the night. Um Pommy and oh, this has just dropped one. Good evening, Pom. Good to see you. Um he's plugging your interview with Brooke Vernon. And I'm like, oh, we've made him on this channel. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I was fresh back in Australia, happy, tanned, and um, yeah, now I'm 65 and my name matches my age. <laughs> look let's not talk about age in this forum because i no. know that a lot of people that are younger than me go oh i'm so old you're 25 sit down and go over there Just you are you. you are we're young well look yeah like you said poppy is young very young so um you know she'll be she'll be in the system for a few yeah. seasons i would assume and, yeah um, i haven't seen her play that's the truth i don't think many of no. us have no, because um, she came from the Geelong Amateurs and Geelong Under 18. So she's come right. from the Geelong the Geelong factory, as they like to call it. Okay. Um, so I'm looking forward. Yeah, she's only 18, 153. So she's shorter than I am. So um, that's something because not many people are shorter than me. So <laughs> um, welcome aboard, Poppy. Please always stay shorter than me. Thanks. <laughs> welcome. And accept my follow. Come on. Yeah, come on, Poppy. Follow, follow Tez. <laughs> All right, so lucky last on our list, finally we have reached it, and that is Elise O'Day. Now, I I love the way Elise goes about it, and I know they put up in um, 
on the Facebook page and the Instagram page this week, um, I think it was yesterday, uh, the video, the preview video of this week um, and Aliso Day's like tackle in round one last year where she just like came in and they had the music in the background. It's just like bang. It's just like that's the impact. That's the kind of stuff we want to see from Aliso Day coming across from the D's. I think it was last year was her first year at the Blues. Um, I, I'm... I've got huge raps for, for the way she carries herself and the way she goes about her football. She's not the slimmest player, mm-hmm. but she's built and, and it's her stature and her ability to win the football in the middle. It's like that that extra extra bull that we need to get that ball out to our running mids. And I I can only see her go a little bit more this year yeah in the footage that i've seen of her her body composition already looks totally different to what it was last year um she looks to be a lot more stronger leaner um and i I mean a lot of them a lot of them do but her in particular she really stood out to me so yeah she came from melbourne it was her first season with the club in you know last season and, and and she's actually uh quite important piece to the leadership puzzle because she was a leader at Melbourne and she was essentially a leader for us as well. But always when you're playing your first season at a new club, it takes time. You've got to, you know, you've got to accustom yourself with the people, the environment, let alone in a COVID environment. So it's not, you know, the full picture. So I hope that she, and you know, she's done the podcast with the girls as well. So I think we're going to get a, a better version of Aliso Day this season. I think so. And I think now that she's had one year under the belt um, in the Navy Blue, I think that she can, yeah, she can take her her game to the next level. And I uh, agree here, Pommy goes, who mm. reminds me of our version of Ed Kerno? Does her job, no nonsense, and you just do not notice her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But when she, yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, I mm. wholeheartedly agree. Um I, I can't see I can't see a side without her in it, and it's one of those things that I just you you have your starting lineup and and you write your names down of who you know is definitely going to be in there, and she's definitely one of my first that I write down every week. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, no, I'm excited. I, I think we're in for a big year. She's in our starting midfield, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So what? It's like a Prasparkas, O'Day, Egan, Egan. And with Moody in the ruck. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I like that because you got you're gonna have you're gonna have her coming up. We'll we'll bring in our special guest in a minute, but um, to talk about this game. But um you have your your Kiochis, your Bree Davies, and your Brittany Benicis probably in the starting with Al Downey as their new ruckman. So Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to be an interesting start. Um, before we bring in our special guest, I do want to give special mention to one of the players that we haven't previewed tonight um, but um, has taken 12 months off the game, and that is Serena Gibbs. Um, we wish her all the best um, with whatever is happening um, at the moment and um, just for her to know that the the Bagger Army is right behind her and we look forward to seeing her bigger and better in the 2023 season. Well said, well said. And the footy club will always have her back. That's just the beauty of, well, that's a beauty of all footy clubs, their family. Yeah, Yeah, and that's it. And she's one of those players that um, can have an impact in our forward line, but I think she just needs a little bit of time for herself, which is totally fine. And we all get that, especially after... The year that was, um, everybody needs a little bit of me time, and she's definitely, definitely in at that. Yep, spot on. Come back bigger and stronger and better. <laughs> Sorry, I saw this and I had to. <laughs> 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 oh goodness! All right. So, without further ado, let us Let's welcome mm-hmm. our special guest for the evening. Thank you, Terry. Yes. Welcome. <laughs> Paolo, how are you? Very well, ladies and gents. A very, very good evening to you, to you both. And uh, well, it's here. It is. Woody, it is. Bring it on. And um, I, I was thinking about it earlier today, and I'm just like, 
hang on a minute, it's Wednesday. Footy's back. You know you're yeah. going to get that like butterfly feeling in your stomach and you know footy's happening. It's how I feel before any round one, whether it's boys or girls, you just know it's happening. And you look at it, you're looking at the at the clock going, when is it Sunday? When is it Sunday? Yeah, I think it's um I think because we've had like last year and the year before, there was just like, you know, are we going to the footy or we're not going? And well, I think I think we're going, aren't we? <laughs> we I'm I pretty sure we're going. That's <laughs> would everyone right now. <laughs> yeah, we kind of gotta wake up every day, check Twitter, make sure nothing crazy in the world's <laughs> happened, and then hope that nothing's been cancelled. It's it, it is a bit like that. <laughs> yeah, like it's, it's sort of like when I, I was looking through the fixtures and stuff for, for both teams and um like I think there were a few like later fixtures that said, you know, TBA, 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 TBA. I'm like, yeah, well, that's that's probably going to be what the teams are going to be this weekend as well. I think um, I'll get like from this weekend's game, like, I mean, we're talking about players too. I mean, every, every player's got to be ready on the list, like from both sides. Like it's just, you know, we, we don't know who's going to be, you know, I know, I know this weekend for a fact that um, there's mail out of both camps. I'm not going to name names, but both teams are going to be affected. Um, there's going to be some names that won't be lining up for Carlton and Collingwood um, this weekend. So pretty, pretty important players um, from what I've been told. But uh, look, I, I think this is just going to be the year that is with with the AFLW and potentially with the AFL as well, is that yeah. all girls on the list are going to have to be ready. Simple as that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think they brought out recently in the last – week or so some protocols around what it's going to look like in terms of um what players are required how many players are required um yeah so it's going to be interesting i think it's a matter you have to have at least um 16 ready to go every week but yeah no i think yeah they had some protocols that came out recently around around that and i think they have the ability to sign on um some sign on, get some more sign on players. Should things get dire, like in the BBL at the moment? Yeah, yeah. I think, I think too. It's also a case of like, doesn't matter what situation is going on externally or internally, all that. Like, you, you can't. Whatever happens, happens. I mean, sports and and especially AFL, it's a brutal competition. It's a war of attrition, isn't it? Like, one goes down, another one's got to get back up. And and the best of teams, and and we've said it. You know, we say it countless times. We know how many injuries the. The, the blokes have had over the last couple of years. And, you know, we, we can't keep using it as an excuse. You know, if one player goes down because they've copped a positive or whatever it is, it's come on, next one up. you got to yeah. be ready. That's why we train. That's why we're here. That's why we're all learning the same game plan. And that's what the best coaches do. They, they implement a, they implement a system and they implement a, they implement all their processes to, to get the job done. And that's, that's what it needs to be this weekend, regardless of, of who plays or not. I mean, I think the exciting thing is that, um, for the competition is that, you know, I know you mentioned a few of the girls before, like Paige Trudgeon and and um, Amy Milford as well, um, you know, coming through the VFLW system too, players that aren't, that haven't been put up in the spotlight. Um, you know, I've been watching them down at VFL level, you know, VFLW level and, you know, they're, they're all adequate footballers and that's the only pathway at the moment, isn't it? And it's not, it's not branded about on social media and news because none of the media resources are down there. So no one really knows about any of these players and the beauty of you know of, of what's happening you know externally at the club is that these girls are going to get opportunity to play yeah i think yeah. also the the beauty of of this sport and the beauty of this club really because of the fans and just because of the club in general is i mean let's say someone like a you know a milford comes in for example plays has one good game. You're only one good game away from really yeah. endearing yourself to the fans and then getting that second game. And then all of a sudden you get on a roll, you get some confidence. That's really what this game's about. Yeah, yeah. spot on. And I think too, like there's also, there's also this issue with the league as well, like where um, I think, you know, like there's always chat about, oh, you know, the skills and the this and that. I think there's no better opportunity than because there's no – VFLW or like sort of underpinning competition that you're sided up against when the season's actually going. I think I think a rotation of players this year, which I think is pretty much pretty much inevitable. I think that's going to start to develop the league a little bit more. I mean, it's still in its infancy and it's going to take time, uh, but you know that that's the only way you're going to learn. You, you've got to be thrown in the deep end, and it's going to happen this year. So we've still got a couple of girls coming back. From injury as well, like Mimi Hill, I think she'll hopefully. Yeah. I don't know if she did her knee, but 
she was showing a bit and then obviously whatever happened happened with her knee but um look there's yeah, some things to like but there's plenty to work on come round one plenty to work on yes i'm yes, i'm very is. excited by round one and i um i was thinking about it earlier and i'm just like the ultimate rivalry is always carlton collingwood and usually it's the traditional first first game of the of the year mm. obviously it, obviously, they've decided that that's not going to happen, obviously, with the redevelopment of Icon Park, the light situation and all that. But I still think we're going to get a decent crowd there. Two teams, no matter whether it's male or female, always have that rivalry. And I'm just really, really looking forward to seeing, even if we don't have all the big-name stars on either team, just seeing what the girls can do and put on a show regardless. Yeah, we'll get a win, Shan. What's yeah, this language? We need, we're getting, we're oh, some people, yeah. we don't know if it wins, it's a win. It's, it's not to put on a show. The, double, the, w, the W for this for this uh, show stands for win, not 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 win. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I will say one thing. I will say one thing, and I've got it. I've circled it about 10 times on my notes before I came in, right? Now, this is from a pure football perspective. I don't know what the hell it is with this AFLW team of ours, but did you notice that? I think it's been the last two years. We, we dominate for 15, 20, 30 minutes and we cannot put it on the scoreboard. My right. God. Who does How that sound like? Who does the that sound like? It's a club thing. It's a club-wide <laughs> issue. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I mean, I think you're right. I, th- I think also from memory when we played Collingwood last year, they kicked the first four or five goals of the game. We, didn't, we actually did that a lot last season. Yeah. Um, our women's side. And, um, Again, we didn't get off to good starts. We put together five or ten minutes of football just to get back in the game, and then we'd yeah. find a way to lose it in the end. And yep. yeah, that's a good point. And, and that's the thing. Like we've got to start strong. I mean, it's 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 a common saying amongst every sport. You've got to start strong, but more important, you can't let the game get away from you so early the way we did. You know, it's at Icon Park. Collingwood can't come in and get comfortable early. No, and that's the thing with AFLW games. They are shorter than the men's. So we right. can't afford to let them get four or five goals up and then expect to come back with a flurry. Mm. That's that's probably one of the key things that we need to we, – we hope they have addressed in the off-season because, it yeah, you don't have enough time in, in AFLW to, to rest on your heels. You need to be mm, on your yeah. toes and you need to be at them from the very first bounce. Like yeah. – Bring back the fire, bring back the energy, put them into the turf within reason and, and hit them hard early. Hit them hard on the mm. scoreboard. Put it, without doubt, a quarter time. Thank you very much, Collingwood. There's the gate. Bye. Yeah. Well, look, it's a good segue into my like the next thing I'm looking at because Collingwood do this every time. They target Maddie. We know it's going to happen. They're going to get yeah. under her skin. Maddie loves to dish it out. She loves to get a bit physical. I remember it happening last year and she just lost her cool a little bit and went overboard. And I just wonder, this is the part about the leadership that we were talking about earlier from Maddie's behalf, from someone like an Elise O'Day to just to help her out and, and steady her up when they need be. Because like I said, we know what they're going to try and do. They're going to try and stop Maddie, get under her skin and, and then it's going to filter through the rest of them. So that's the other thing I'm looking at, Paul. Yeah, I think so. Like it, it's, and I think it might just be an issue that plagues, the club as a whole it's like well okay like you can go out and you know give it to your opponent as well but at the same time you still got to go out there and play footy don't you so be tough at the ball be tough at your opponent but you know when I, when I say within reason I don't mean within reason I mean you know do it properly be hard and and be hard at the football and, and and win the contest really that that's what it that's what it should be about so keep your head in the game and when your head's in the game you know, you, you take the hard hits and you and you give them out. So, and we know how tough she is. We know how tough tough Maddie is. She's probably arguably probably our probably our best footballer, if not one of the best in the in the league as well. So, elite kick. She finds the ball, and it's it's about her teammates looking after her with her as well, and being able to let her play her game and go to business. You know, the stars the stars have got to be the stars, mm. and the, the yeah. ones below have to recognise that as well. That's just that's just how footy clubs are. That they're they're yeah. not all they're not all the same player, hundred percent. And um, I, I I totally agree. And like Natalie said, it's a longer preseason. Our girls look elite. Good. We want them to. I know it's been a long drawn out preseason, mm-hmm. and the season was supposed to start in early December. Now that it's finally here, 
Um, who, who do you think will be the key players for us to win on Sunday afternoon? I think the second best midfielder for us, or that thir- second slash third, because I mean, I, I know what I'm going to get from Maddie. I know I'm going to get 20 and something, 20 touches plus. It's yeah. that second slash third midfielder that steps up to chop out. Um, yeah. I think now whether that is an Aliso day, whether that's a you know a Grace Egan, I'm not I'm not sure, but it's that next layer um, of player and and um, I, I don't really have a player. I, I remember last year's game really clearly, and we just butchered the ball. So that's oh. the first thing I'm looking at. How are we moving the ball? Half's been there for a while now. I'll be honest, I don't really know what we what our like identity is as a footy club. I know as as a team. Sorry, I know that the team has changed and we're a smaller forward line. So we're going to play quicker. Um, but I really want to see, you know, an identity in the game early on that that's what I'll be looking for. Mm. Yeah. Oh, cool. I think for me, like from a player perspective, I think Terry's spot on when he talks about the midfield, just because like the territory battle is just so important in, yeah. in this particular competition. Cause it's, it's so hard for, you know, for him to go from, defense to attack you know in in one passage of play so the, the territory battle is key and if we can get on top of the clearances um you know a day and prosparcus they're going to be integral to our you know and, and moody you know she's obviously going to have a little bit of stiff opposition in the ruck with collingwood and their new ruck but i think i don't think we utilized her enough last year she's, she's such an important player um yeah it's moody you know the, the, the territory she gains and you've got to make you've got to make that count um, but w- one player I will, and this is not because the channel sponsors her, but I picked her out last year as well. Um, Charlotte Wilson, yeah, yep. she, she on, honestly she's one of my one of my favourite players because she her ability. The hardest thing to do, I think, as a defender, is to read the ball in the air and and to mark it in one clunk. And she that's that's her strength and her forte, and that is what can can set you up off off half back and and I think it also sets you up because we know sort of teams like to press up when they're in their forward half and lock it in their forward half. So I think if we can get pressure on the ball carrier with our smalls in the forward half, then she can come in and sort of sweep across the line there as well. So she's probably the one from a defensive point of view. Midfield point of view, it's got to be O'Day backing up Prisparkas. That's going to be yeah. the big thing too. Um, and then from from a forward point of view, I think if we can sort of get and make it a running game inside our front half, then Georgia G um, yeah. is the one. She's as, as as clean as clean as anything, clean as oh. anything. She is. Yeah, she has the ball on a string, Georgia G. Sometimes I don't understand how she gets it, and it, she's what I think that that was going to be my my pick was was my yeah. key player is Georgia G. When she's on fire, good luck. Like. She she's one of the most electric players that we've got on that list that we know will give 110%. And I think that Bulldogs Pride game last year was the game for me where she just kind of went, I'm here. No, yeah. enough, enough, enough's enough. And she, like, we came back in that game against the Bulldogs and I, I was I honestly thought we were going to win it off Georgia G alone. So mm. I I want her to come out all guns blazing and I know that her she'll have another half a dozen girls that are, are wanting redemption from round one last year. Yeah. yeah. I, I think as well like players like that, you know, and this is not I mean this is just this is just the fact of the competition. Like she 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 is a footballer, if that makes sense. The, the way she kicks the ball, the way she handles the ball. And and I think that in this competition at the moment, like the gap between those players and sort of the rest of the competition, like they might, they might only make up like a player like Prisparkas, G, all those types of players who are, you know, that they're natural footballers when they get the ball. As I said, you, you see the way they kick it. I think those players are such a minuscule amount in the team that you need to get the ball in their hands as often as possible. Things just happen. Things just happen. That's yeah. what you need to do. You get all those players involved with ball in hand, and then the rest of it, the rest of it just happens because the gap in talent between the best in this league and, and the bottom rung is just, it, it's a golf. It's it's enormous, yeah. absolutely it enormous. It is. Now, I'm going to run something past the both of you. Um, AFLW website put together a, a mock uh, mock team, if you will. Yes. Um, so I'm not, I've, you probably both have seen it, but um, they've got Carrington and Wilson as our 
um, backline with yep. Mua, Gab, and Jester Poz, who is new to the team this year, yep. half back. Yep. Rosali McKay Walker, Bessio Hammonds G, forward line of Stevens O'Day, followers of Moody, Prasparkas, and Egan, with an interchange of Plain, McAvoy, Jess Good, Annie Lee, and Maddie Guerin. What are your thoughts? Back well, I don't think they're very strong. Very yeah, strong. I, yeah. I don't think Moore will play this week, though, right? Isn't she injured? I believe her knee is still giving her a little bit of trouble. Um, she's been wearing, I think, I've noticed in the Instagram story, she's been wearing kind of a um, compression on it. So I'm not sure yeah. how much she will have an impact if she does play. I would probably suggest her as a no at this stage. But mm. um, still a very strong well, backline. That's where a Brooke Vernon gets her chance, right? Correct. That's what I, that's what I reckon anyway. Yeah. Well, was Vernon not – I think she was, if my memory serves me correctly, did she She played the first two or three rounds and then she was actually trending. Uh, did she hurt her hamstring or knee? I think she may have hurt her hamstring or something happened where she – because mm. I think – did she not – did she miss – I think she missed the season. From, she did. She did miss from the rest of the season. Yeah. So I, I remember hearing her in an injury – in one of those injury reports as well. So, look, yeah. I, mean, I think one of those – one of those backline players is, is definitely going to miss out. Um, yeah. Opportunity, opportunity yeah. arises. I yeah, think, well, they um, didn't mention Hill either in that list. So when you read out that side and you look at it and you you don't have Mimi Hill in that team, you know you still got quality to come in. Yeah. Well, there's two things that I'm thinking of. One, Brooke Walker is going to be crucial if we're going to want to run and play fast yes. and break yeah. the lines. And then number two, how many – I mean, I'm just thinking between Vessio, Stevens and let's say Georgia G – how many goals do we need from the three of them collectively to to put ourselves in a position to win? I'm thinking something like six, seven between the three of them. Mm, it's going to be an interesting one because obviously with um, our, our our usual tall timber, they've got oh, I can't remember. I think it's Livingston is their is their key defender. Um, yeah. I don't know who she who she'd probably line up on. So it'll be a question of. How I don't think we'll be scoring many goals with um, direct targets into the forward line, or more will be run and carry goals. I feel okay because just because I don't I don't see it. It's going to be one of those matches where we kind of line up pretty evenly against Collingwood and um, on all lines. So it's going to be interesting, an interesting battle. Um, if our forward line can get on top, I'd say at least two goals each would probably be enough with obviously a couple of goals from our midfield. I can't see it being a very high scoring affair unless it's really one sided. Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah. I think it's going to be a tight one, to be honest. Mm, I agree. <laughs> I agree. Well, I think it's going to be sitting there like this. Yeah. <laughs> it's no, going to be really tough, tough, I think, I, on, on the weekend. But see, this is where, and, and, we spoke about making the most of your opportunity as well. And I think it also comes down to, um, again, and it's just it's just a plague through the club. I don't know what it is, but I want to see what our coaches do when the momentum is not going our way. Yes. That's what I want to see. That, that's, that is, that's the big thing. It's like, okay, well, you know, come out and, and, and play the way, you know, we want to play and whatever it might be, whether they try to go, you know, contested possession, you know, lock it up there and, and make it a scrap in the middle and then clear it and then try to get the smalls involved. But um, I think when the momentum's against us, that's going to be the uh, that's going to be the, the, the true test, definitely. And there will be momentum swings because we've seen how well Collingwood can change that momentum. Mm. And, they, and they started off the game last year. They caught us off guard. So mm. trying to wrestle back that momentum is like it, it happens with their men's side as well. It's just something that they're really, really good at. We don't want them to be to be good at it, but they are, and they're they're good at momentum swings. And like one or two little bits of play can change the whole perspective of the game. So no, I agree with you. It'd be interesting to see what half and the rest of the team can do. Um, I know that he's pretty much done not much. Um, to be able to combat it because it is difficult to combat. Yeah. And we found that with the men's team as well. It's really hard to, to change that momentum swing if you're not 100% head in the game. So it's something that the girls need to to be well aware of. Mm, yeah, I think so. What, on, on the coach, what, what's, 
what's the geo there? Like, what are we, you know, no one's, see, no one's really talking about that, that side of the, the coin, are they? Like, I mean, what happens yeah. if they don't, because what did we do? We made a grand final two years ago and lost that. And since then it's been, it's yeah. not, been not been great, has it? No. And it's one of those things that I, I noticed a lot in AFLW that the, the coach isn't really mentioned as heavily no, not around performances as it is for the men. So they're not as. I can't wait till it is. I can't wait till it is. That's where you know everyone's fired up. Yes, correct. <laughs> well, no, it's, it's, hey, it's a good point because when when is the time when the expectation comes about, you know? But it has to. It has yeah. to. Like, I mean, we, we all want them to be, you know, you, you want it to be up in lights. Full time wage, full time job, blah 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 blah. That's gonna you're gonna get scrutiny with that, aren't you? Yeah. I mean, yeah. if it's a part time job, it's part time wage, it's part time quality. Whereas if it's that, you're gonna get the full run, aren't you? And that that's that's the way it should be. Yeah, I don't think like sometimes you don't even know that there's been a coach change. No, no. So, and, and that's it. And like I think, well, um, Natalie brought up a good point. You did make the prelim in 2020 before the season was called off. So yes. he's got history of, of good performances, but 2021 season was kind of a letdown for me. So I think he's been there long enough now, and I know that the coach before him, there was a lot of scrutiny towards the end of his tenure there, and I think that the spotlight needs to be put on Daniel Harford this year. Um, yeah. If we don't perform, what's next? Mm. Yeah, well, you, you want to see improvement on... on um... On last season, I think because we were sort of we were there, there, there and abouts, and the games we had to win, we we coughed up obviously, and then I think we, what we were relying on like results in the last two games, and then one went our way, one didn't, and so you know that's no. that's the way. Yeah. hopefully we're not at hopefully destiny's in our own hands this year, and we don't have to worry about that sort of stuff. So oh, I'm I'm excited. I, I'm yeah. I have a crack that that you can't knock that. You know, I mean, look, the no. skills are. The skills are the skills. Are as I said, the talent gap between the best in the league and and the bottom rung is is massive. But I'll tell you what, there's one thing that surprised me when I went and watched the first game, Carlton Collingwood, a couple of years ago was um and and throughout the whole competition is is how hard they go at it. You, you just know that they've, they've got a point to prove. Really, it's great. It's fantastic. Yeah. No. I think, uh, yeah. Go ahead. I think. I think also. Last year, with there, there was that burden. We'll call it burden of expectation. They treated it like a burden. It ended up becoming a burden. I don't mm. think they have that this season. If anything, Collingwood's meant to be winning the premiership this year, um, which is something they struggled with the year before last or the season before last. So yeah. um, that's the that's the interesting thing for me. I, I, I expect Collingwood to be a really, you know, good professional, mature outfit, and uh, I think that's where they'll trouble us. But I think we have the ability to to get the job done as you know at our best. Yeah. Flipping it on its head just quickly, mm. who are the players that we need to look out for on the Collingwood side of things? So what players do we need to stop, do you think? Chioch. <laughs> <laughs> uh I there there is a defender for them called uh, uh forgive me for mispronouncing her last name, Ruby Slicer. Is that her name? Yeah. Gun, yeah, something like that. Need, yeah, yeah. We need to stop her. We need to stop her influence. Uh, and you know, I think Sabrina Frederick as well up in the up in the forward line. If she starts getting her hands on the on the football too, but she's 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 just for the camera. She's she's not. There's okay. no stuff. There. Don't worry about history, it. History history <laughs> shows that whatever club she plays for, when she plays against Carlton, nothing. So that's oh, really? that's true. True. At True. Brisbane, she had a shocker when she played against Carlton. When she played for Richmond in their very first game against Carlton, she gave them donuts. So let's hope the trend continues. Mm. You just put the mocker on them. <laughs> well, ultimately, it's really the Collingwood midfield that is going yeah. to be the worry. It, that's, that's ultimately what it, what it is. Speed, um, speed you know. in the midfield because we're a bit yeah. slow. Yeah, yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. We're not as quick. I think Grace Egan's the quickest out of the three. If we're gonna, if we're gonna compare them for quickness, unless you put a Georgia G in there, which has been known to happen. Um, but I, mm. I, they my biggest worry is Bree Davy having a blinder. Um, 
she see it's a different lineup against her this year, so I'm not sure how how it's going to go down. But I know that um, the likes of um, oh, Brittany Benici and um, Chloe and Malloy. the like it's going to be hard to stop. And yes. Chloe yes. Malloy is the biggest one for me in their forward line as well. Um, she's been known to really be. Um, a dominant player for them in their forward half. So I, I think that we need to lock her and lock her down really early. Don't give her a sniff because if you give her that confidence, she'll carry that for the rest of the game. And give her a bit of uh, give her a bit of stick if you if she comes next to you on the on the sidelines as well, Tess. Shout Don't worry, I'll be I'll be uh, I'll, I'll be out there shouting my little heart out. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> I hope she goes well, but I hope they get beat by ten goals. Yeah, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah, but also I think it's a, look. It's, I mean, ultimately it's another opportunity for for the fans and for us to be there amongst each other. Yes, the, the AFLW is really, for me, it, I've said this before. It, it's the closest thing to that grassroots footy that we have at a high level. Um, mm, yeah. It's really the experience of the day because we're so free in a sense at Icon Park. You can move around meet with people, say hello here, and you kind of stand around each other. It's got that local footy feel about it still, which is quite raw. Yeah. Um, mm. And, you know, we had, we've had we got had a few people in the comments who don't know any of the players. I think this is what it is. Like, come, come along for a game. Let's catch okay. up, meet each other. A lot of us haven't met each other. And let's just, you know, the footy's there. The club's there. It's on display. I think it's a good opportunity for us to, to meet each other and hang out. And it yep. just so happens to also be our footy club on the field. Yep, yeah. exactly right. BA will be represented. The JP will be represented. The yep. AFLW show will be represented. Come down and say hello. Are they selling beers at the game? Are they? Is that is there, uh, or is that too? Uh... I would hope so. On a Sunday, Arvo, that's exactly what we need. So you think, a pie of beer. Yeah. A pie Plural beer. beers. Plural beers. beers. Oh. Yeah. Sorry, what we boys. need, what we need, is the nut man with these, uh, with these two dollar bag of nuts. That's what we need. Peanuts, 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 peanuts. <laughs> Our dads will remember that one, Paul. Oh, no, I <laughs> know. That, hey, uh, Shannon and I go way back. We we go way back. How way does this back. happen? Can we? Can we? Can we? Can you tell us oh, what the situation is? Nah, the show's not all about us. Yes, okay. no, yes. <laughs> no, our dads, our dads know each other explain. from way back. Our dads know yeah. each other from way back, and we met okay. way back when Carlton were playing at um, at Icon Park, up in the Heroes wow. Stand back in the day. Yep. Rex Hunt up. going crazy at Smokers. Yep. Absolutely <laughs> sensational. I love it. Those, were the days. Those were the days. See, that's when we were young, right? And even when we were losing, we still had the hope of. Oh yeah, it's all good. You know, we're gonna come good. We're gonna come good. You know, a beard and no hair later. Here we are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all these wrinkles I've got going on. Yeah, Terry, what do you yeah. use? Made a bit of L'Oreal, or what, what's the go on there? I've been getting a lot of sun, guys. Putting moisturizer on the face. Getting uh, getting this Greek skin back to where it needs to be. The hair is back. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've um, yeah, I, I've got I've got my little routine. Lovely. Pom is having yeah. a bit of a dip at me in the uh, in the comments as well. Yeah, and he's not happy. Yeah, he's not happy with me either. He's not happy with me either. I showed him. <laughs> I showed him the shirt that I wore on New Year's Day and uh, and the glasses I was wearing. Just these blue tinted glasses. I had glitter on my face as well. <laughs> I saw um, that. Yeah. <laughs> Why didn't you don that on Sunday, mate? <laughs> I'll come with the glitter and the glasses. All right. <laughs> <laughs> They're actually right here. Oh, right here <laughs> Magnificent. <laughs> oh, that is, that you, is gotta, you have to wear those. you got to wear that those. If we win, I will come to the yeah. next home game in these. There's the deal. And you, you have to be a guest on my next oh, AFLW show wearing them. Okay, done. Done. If we win, done. All right, if we win, done. All right, <laughs> boys. I have a segment that um, yes. obviously the person that is not um, – it has um, – been unable to join us on the show this evening and it's going to be a, re a regular weekly thing um, and that is Michelle's tips. So Michelle sits with me in the cheer squad um, yep. and she is one of the best people I know. Um, she's given me her tips for this evening um, and she said to me that she is tipping with her head, not her heart. Um, round yes. one is very important for our new look team to gel together. 
Unfortunately, constant COVID interruptions means the tipsters this year are probably going to have a bit of a rough trot. So across the entire board, um, not just our game, she has up opted for Richmond, North Melbourne, Melbourne, Frio, Brisbane, GWS, and she's unfortunately picked Collingwood. Her heart says Carlton. Her head says Collingwood. Her heart will win the day is what I what I believe. But I've that's just for that. ticking purposes. She's tipped Collingwood. But well, okay. she is definitely barracking for Carlton. There is a double there is a double thing to this. So if Collingwood actually wins, she wins a tip. But if Carlton win, Carlton win. So it's right. It's a win win situation. Like it's Yes. But she yeah. will be here next week delivering her tips live. Um but that nice. was me delivering her tips for her this evening. So um, obviously, I don't need to ask you boys who your tips are going to be for this week. It's obviously Carlton. Um, yeah. Have you had a look at any of the other games? Have you? Well, I'll tell you what, if you get anything over $2 about Carlton, I'd be uh, I'd be having a cheeky little wager on them just quietly. Absolutely. <laughs> Unfortunately, not allowed to uh, gamble because I work for AFL Victoria and that is... Very good. Oh, okay. Very good. <laughs> Very good. I will do it in your instead. <laughs> I'll oh, have a look instead. Yeah. We can sort that out. <laughs> well, gents, it's been an absolute pleasure having you both this evening. Um, may your team win on the weekend. Yes. Yes. Um, may may the the colours be navy. Um, yes. I really, really do hope that we win on Sunday. I hope to see you both there at some point. Yep. Um, I should be there, hopefully, um, if I stay low for the next couple of days and not leave the house. <laughs> That's the world we live in. But, no, yeah. I do appreciate you both coming on and talking all things Carlton, and fingers crossed we get a win this week. Absolutely. Absolutely. No. Go no Blues. Problem. No problems at all, Shannon. And, uh, again, make sure get to the bloody ground if you can. I know there's a few. Obviously, there's things going on. But get down, show your support. It's a Sunday Arvo. No excuse to miss it. Yeah. Exactly right. Up the baggers. All Have right, a good guys. night. Enjoy.